Good afternoon students. Today I am going to take the next topic of the fourth module of CS VTU CSIS students of microcontroller and embedded systems and uh, we need to follow the author Shibu Kevi. Shibu Kevi and uh, today I am going to explain the fourth module topic that is fundamental issues in software hardware co-design. The hardware software co-design it is a problem statement that when we try to solve this problem statement in real life we, we come across multiple issues in the design. Uh, some of the uh, problem statements are selecting the model as you can see points first point is selecting the model, selecting the architecture there are various architectures are available we need to select the correct one for the designing the embedded uh, system. Selecting the language, there are various uh, C language, C++ language, C Ash, Java and software development languages like VHDL, uh, Verilog uh, system. So like so many languages are there, we have to choose a correct language is nothing but selecting the language and after selecting the language partitioning system requirements into hardware and software. These are the points we need to remember for finding the fundamental issues in hardware and software co-design. The first point is selecting the model. In hardware software co-design models are used for capturing and describing the system characteristics. A model is a formal system consisting of objects and composition rules. What is a model? We have to choose a correct model. It is a formal system consisting of objects and what a uh, number of composition models. It is hard to make decision we have to find out uh, which model we have to choose for particular system design. Most often designers switch between the variety of models they use variety of models from the requirement specification to the implementation aspect of the system design. They will not use particular models, there are various types of models are there, they may use combination of models. The reason being is the objective varies from each phase, uh, phase to phase. Uh, for example, if you take specification stage only functionality of the system because we are finding only specification in focus and not in uh, implementation formation. When the design moves to the implementation from the specification to implementation information about the system components um, we will come to know at that time. So designer has to switch to a model capable of capturing the design structure. So uh, we will discuss the different types of models in the next topic. And then the first topic is selecting the model what all the types of models available and which model is suitable for which phase will be discussed in the next topic and selecting the architecture. A model means uh, uh, for example uh, the architecture specifies how it is going to uh, 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 how it is going to implement in terms of number and types of different components and the interconnection among them. Controller architecture, data path architecture, complex instruction set computing that is CISC, reduced instruction set computing, RISC, CISC, very large instruction word computing, VLIW and single instruction multiple data, SIMD, multiple instruction multiple data, MIMD etc. These are the commonly used architecture in the system. Once again I will tell you about the architecture. The purpose of using the architecture is it specifies how a system is going to implement in terms of number and types of different components and interconnection uh, using them. So controller architecture, data path architecture, complex instruction set architecture, I am giving the types of architecture. First one is called control architecture, data path architecture, complex instruction set computing that is CISC, reduced instruction set computing, RISC, 
very large instruction world computing VLIW, single instruction multiple data SIMD, multiple instruction multiple data MIMD etc. These are the commonly used architecture in system design. First I will tell what is this control architecture. Control architecture implements the finite state machine model. Finite state machine model is also called as FSM model. We are using FSM model for the controller architecture which um, when I come to explain the types of model I will explain in detail with the figure. Using a state register and two combinational circuits uh, we are going to implement this uh, FSM model. A state register we are using it holds the present state and combinational circuit implements the logic for the next state. So, you are having a present state and the next state will be represented using the state register and combinational circuit. It is about the type of architecture called as controller architecture. Next type is what is this data path architecture? It is the best suited for implementing the data flow diagram model. So, that is also a type of model. I will explain next when I explaining the model. This is a data flow diagram model where um, the output is generated as a result of set of predicted computations on the input data. When you are giving number of inputs and you are expecting the predicted output using this data flow model. A data path you represents a channel between the input and the output and in data path architecture data path may contains the registers, counters, register files, memories and ports along with high speed arithmetic units. Ports connected to the data path to multiple buses. Most of the time the arithmetic units are connected in parallel with the pipelining support for bringing high performance. Next is finite state machine model. The next type of architecture model is FS uh, finite state machine data path FSMD. This architecture combines the controller architecture with data path architecture. Con it combines the controller architecture with data path architecture. It implements a controller with data path. The controller generates the control input whereas the uh, data path process the data. The data path contains two types of IO ports out of which one acts as a control port for receiving uh, sending the control signals from the controller unit and the second IO port interface the data path with external world for data input and data output. Normally the data path is implemented in a chip and the IO pins of the chip acts as data input and output ports for the chip residing a resident data path. And the next type of architecture is complex instruction set computing that we already know it is a CISC methodology. The CISC architecture uses a instruction set responding complex operations. It is possible for a CISC instruction set to perform a large complex operations. Example, uh, example you can give reading a register value and comparing it with a given value and transfer the program execution to the new address location okay, with, this, uh, with a single instruction. So, the use of single complex instruction, uh, the use of a a uh, single complex instruction in place of multiple instruction is greatly reduces the programming memory access and program memory size requirement. However, it requires additional silicon for implementing the micro code decoder for decoding the CISC instruction. The data path for the CISC processor is uh, micro code decoder for decoding the CISC instruction. The data part for the Cisco processor is a uh, CISC processor is a micro code decoder for decoding the CISC instruction and the processor is complex actually uh, of the other end. On the other end reduce instruction set computing risk architecture uses the instruction set representing a symbol operands 
It requires the execution of multiple risk instruction to perform a complex operation. The data path of risk, archi risk architecture contains a large register file and storing up operands and output. Risk instruction set is designed to operate on register. Risk architecture supports extensive pipelining. And the next type of architecture is very long instruction world. It is in a simplified way we call it as VLIW. VLIW architecture implements multiple functional units, ALU, multipliers, etc. in the data path. VLIW instruction packages one standard instruction per functional unit of the data path. The next type is parallel processing architecture. It implements multiple concurrent processing elements and each processing element may associate a data path containing register and local memory. A single instruction multiple data is SIMD and multiple instruction multiple data architectures are example for parallel processing architecture that is SIMD and MIMD are example for parallel processing architecture. The next one is selecting the language. The programming language it captures computational model and maps it into a architecture. So, there is no hard or fast rule to specify this language should be used in capturing this model. But a model can be captured using multiple programming languages for example, like C, C++, C++ C Sharp, Java, Python, etc. For software implementation, VHDL code, system C, very large. For hardware implementation, on the other hand, single language can be used for capturing a variety of models. For time, for uh, that is, uh, certain languages are good in capturing certain computational model. If for example, if you take C++, is a good can, uh, uh, it is a good language for capturing an object oriented model. The only prerequisite in selecting a programming languages for capturing a model is that language should capture the model very easily, that is the time. Partitioning system requirements into hardware and software. That is, uh, uh, all this now we have discussed about the models for capturing the system requirements and architecture for implementing the system. From an implementation perspective, it is possible to implement the system requirements in either hardware or software. So, it is uh, a tough decision making task uh, find out yeah, which one to opt to. So, various hardware uh, software uh, trade offs are used for making a decision on the hardware software partitioning. So, the next point this, these are all about the type of uh, fundamental issues in hardware software co design. What are the fundamental issues of hardware software co design in the embedded system is first one is selecting the model, second one is selecting the architecture. Under the selecting architecture, you have controller architecture, data path architecture, finite state, finite state machine data path that is FSMD architecture and uh, uh, risk architecture and CISC architecture and very long instruction word VLIW and parallel processing architecture. So, and next one is selecting the language and partitioning the system requirements into hardware and software. These are the points about the fundamental issues in hardware and software and the types of model we are going to study as a next topic. That is uh, uh, models, uh, 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 what are the types of models? Uh, just I will give briefly uh, data flow graph or uh, data flow graph model, it is also called as GFG model. Second one is control data flow graph that is uh, CDFG model and third one is state machine model uh, uh, that is FSM model, uh, state machine model, it is FSM model. You can give example, I have written automatic tea coffee vending machine 
uh, many examples that is uh, coin operated in telephone system that is they are giving example for FSM model. Then sequential uh, model, sequential program model and uh, concurrent communicating process model, object oriented model, object oriented model and unified modeling language. These are all types of modeling models we are using for computational models in embedded systems, types of models we are used in designing the embedded system. Thank you for listening.